right, we are here today at Heights International Talk Hit. Hit is your weekly dosage of business talk here to inspire, challenge, innovate, and provoke. My name is Gustavo Diaz, and I'm here with a special guest, Joel, Joel Valencia, starting our segment today, episode seven, and it is titled Make It Designer. So shout out to my special guest here today. Uh, today's going to be a juicy one, another one. We've been providing uh, good juicy content for you guys, um, but we also we also got uh, a special guest in the house, my man, my man, uh, my, my buddy here. Um, so before before I introduce him, uh, I was talking with, with Joel and I was just having a good camaraderie with him and I was just picking his brain on real estate and business and marketing and we, we have a lot of similarities. So we were, we were talking and I was just like, man, I love everything that you're saying. Can you give me those in, on point? And man, we just, we made some little outlines and we decided to share it with you guys as always my man uh so joe uh you are our, our special guest so we'll give you we'll give you some time to to talk about you talk about your business how they can find you how they can can locate the man of the hour <laughs> all right perfect uh like i mentioned i joe valencia um basically i, I work in uh, in real estate full-time now um, I work for the Valencia team. Uh, it is uh, it's kind of family, family owned, and operated. Kind of we, we run everything on there. Uh, we're able to move, uh, push a good amount of volume because we have people specialized in different uh, aspects of the, um, the whole deal: buying, selling, investing, and pretty much all of that stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean you can pretty much just put, plug in my name anywhere; it should uh, pop out. Uh, without without any type of issues and you want you want to give them their number your number uh my phone number yeah it's <laughs> three oh five <laughs> if you want to, I don't line, know. no 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 it's fine my business line three oh five uh nine seven nine two 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 there you go and uh and yeah I mean there there you go that's that's the line you there plug you it in there there you go uh so Joe Valencia he's a, an amazing realtor as well uh so you got a lot of good talent here uh so so let's let's talk man uh give me a little bit about you. Uh, y we decided to, to call this episode "Make It Designer." I know you have uh, a little a little business. You used to have a business, uh, a side hustling business uh, with designing and, and stuff like that, something like that. Am I, did I get that correct? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I've been ever since I've been. I mean, uh, little. I was counting my teeth uh, with Tooth Fairy to see how much money I was gonna make that year. <laughs> kind of counting, you know, 20, 40, 60, <laughs> 70, <laughs> just kind of counting how much money I was going to get. So, I mean, from a very young age, I've always looked at, uh, I mean, very entrepreneurial, I mean, just trying to find ways to to make an extra dollar because, I mean, my parents, I was fortunate, I mean, they were able to cover pretty much all costs. But whenever I was like, hey, look, I want that new pair of sneakers coming out. I want that that new thing. They're like, all right, work for it. And I was just like, I mean, I know you, you have had one money. of those. You had one of those kind of parents. <laughs> I think I know your dad, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So he's, I mean, always, it's just like, I mean, you want something uh, out kind of it. out of the budget, not, not out of the budget, but it's not really planned for. Uh, go ahead and go, go work for it. So I found myself in a situation where really wanted something I had to work for it and found a way to, you know, one way or another figure out how to how to find the means to how to know, make it happen obtain it. yeah of course ooh ooh so this this is good man this is good uh i'm sure a lot of our listeners um again if you haven't yet like share subscribe comment let's hear about you uh i'm sure a lot of our listeners uh they're in the same boat because this um this show is for entrepreneurs uh hard workers in mind and people who don't expect free handouts so so yeah. we love we love stories just like that uh who's been hustling from from a child's young age <laughs> that's <laughs> you so so you and i we were talking um talking about business in, in in general and we decided to call this uh this episode make a designer mm -hmm. why so basically i mean kind of the gist of it um just because someone puts a big name on on something, it makes it expensive, makes it designer. Now it's more expensive, exclusive, and yep. uh, they barely they ba basically have a validation to charge you, upcharge you, ridiculous amount of money because it's made, it's, I mean, made designer. Made it okay. So all right, all right. basically, that's that's basically what I kind of want to go go through, and we had uh, we had some points that we kind of had discussed about. Mm -hmm. um, 
how people and I mean kind of how that happens okay all right sounds good so we got uh five hits for you guys today uh as you guys know we have hits and each hit is kind of like a bullet point so we got five hit that we're gonna hit you smack you uh <laughs> make make you a new man new woman in <laughs> life and business so we're gonna hit it hit it hard today uh hit number one uh, you came up with it, so I'll, I'll give you the first right. So, what's hit number one? Okay, so it's not it's not really about uh, what you're selling; it's how you sell it. So it's not about how you sell it. It's w- it's it's about what you sell. No, it, it's no, about it's how you sell it, not how not what you sell. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah. So let's uh, dive in, dissect. Uh, okay, so basically, break I'm, it up for okay, me. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a, a quick story. One of the things that I had to do when I was in high school is uh, sell sell chocolates as a fundraiser for football. Okay. So everybody was kind of faced with that. I mean, we walked into the locker room. Your name was kind of checked out. You're given a box. Here you go. Here's 50 chocolates. I mean, and you I guys sh- know that. We, we love those chocolates, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> we know that. Exactly. <laughs> so they're like, I mean, here you go. Here's a 50, 50 chocolates. Come back with 50 bucks huh? at the end of the week. So it's just kind of like, okay, I mean, how am I going to do this? And I saw time after again. I mean, people were like, oh, okay, thank you, whatever. Here's, <laughs> here it is. And I had one lady gave me, she gave me five bucks. She was like, I don't have change, but I really don't eat chocolate. Here's the five dollars. Mm. And I, I was eat like, the chocolate myself. I, I was like, you. okay, perfect. So I'm already. So I was like, okay, five bucks. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, we're cutting a profit here. There you go. Or what am I gonna do with other four chocolates? So I kind of said, okay, well, how you about if sold I sold it for two dollars a piece for the next one? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so just to switch it up, I was like, okay, how about I'm not selling chocolate. I'm looking for donations for the football team. All so right. I switched it up. So I would go up to people. I was like, hey, uh, would you like to donate uh, to our football team? Um, you know, we're trying to buy some equipment. We're trying to do some stuff. And the conversation switched around to, I mean, with a minimum dollar, one dollar donation, I can give you a chocolate. I'll give you a chocolate. I like how you switched that up. So that was was quick. Yeah, it was completely switched that up. And uh, we're supposed to sell (laughs) one box and we got rid of one. You know, coach would give us another box and, you know, you get a hundred bucks to the team and that kind of cover your costs for the year. And I mean, I was able to sell six in a week. Six in a week. Six in a week, which was completely yeah, out of range. Yeah. Um, All right. What was the average person selling? Do you remember? Uh, average, I mean, Half one, maybe two. Yeah, All it's right. just kind of like, and then there were some guys, <laughs> you know, some of the linemen that would come back and like, hey, uh, you know, I paid the I paid the 50 bucks and kind of kept the chocolate. So. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, okay. The, <laughs> different <laughs> business mentality here. Because uh, I did the same thing. I did the same thing, but with a little different flavor. Um <laughs> Don't judge me, y'all. I know y'all judging me. I would eat the whole entire box, and I would have, I would be indebted to the school fifty dollars. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, mean. I remember that. I remember that. So uh, I got suspended from selling chocolates. <laughs> Not allowed to sell <laughs> chocolates anymore. Uh, but man, those little, those, those with the caramel one, those are they were, they were yeah. On point. We had we had all five flavors. Whew. I mean, didn't really. <laughs> we, had, we had the crunch, the, dark, <laughs> the almond, the dark with the, with almond, gotcha. and then you had the regular. So, so again, I mean, and that goes totally. I mean, even you were you were doing that from a young age, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I was high 15, school. Yeah. So you were doing that at a young age, uh, just like your your hit. It was said it's not about what you sell; it's about how you sell it. So you changed the game. So you you started yeah. receiving contributions and donations with a minimum of one dollar. And then you gave them a chocolate as a reward, as a thank you. You yeah. came, you basically came from contribution. You said, "I'm going to give you something. I'm going to give you a chocolate for you giving us a, a sponsorship back." Oh, 100 percent. And people came back um, after. I mean, they were like, "Hey, how do how do your team do?" <laughs> which I mean, brought up a conversation, which I mean went went a little further. So it wasn't just, uh, "Hey, you're that guy that told me the chocolate." Yeah. yeah. So it changed y- it up a little bit. You know what's funny? Um, I take it you didn't go into the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> I take it you didn't go, but you did go in no. business. Uh, and, yeah, and, did and go into business. And you do remember that. So, I mean, the things that we learn in business, even at a young age, uh, is really, I mean, it's impactful. It, it changes uh, our character and who yeah. we are. So, so if you guys got kids out there, man, make them make them think of a different route. Don't make them go into all the different, the same routes that everybody's taking. Don't just sell the sell a piece of chocolate. You know. So, how yeah. do we translate that? To the average plumber out there, man, so or the average business owner, the yeah. the business, the the guy who owns his own landscaping business, the attorney, um, the public insurance adjuster. Shout yeah. out to my man Robert Rodriguez. Love you, bro. <laughs> so, for example, I mean, let's say, uh, I mean, you do gardening. 
um, if you're a one one ta- uh, one one man team, you're you know cutting the grass, you're putting up the flowers, you're cutting, you're trimming, <coughs> you're doing pretty much everything A through Z, and you're doing the accounting, you're paying yourself, you're you know putting gas in the truck, you're cleaning the truck, and you're doing absolutely everything. Okay. Now, you do get a hundred percent of the profits because it's just you. Mm-hmm. But if you had someone else uh, on there, I mean, you bring someone else, you you uh, get them to help you out. And you pay them something, you teach them kind of what you're doing, your craft. Give them value. Exactly. You give, I mean, you're giving them value, providing a better service because now you have a quicker turnaround time. And, and yeah, I mean, once you have a good amount, I mean, you have two, three people on staff, kind of, you coordinated with them. Uh, now you can take, you know, you could take bigger projects. You're coming from a place of value. You're providing better service. Now you gotcha. have someone, you have an accountant, you have someone that kind of drives the truck and there's going to be a point where you don't have to be driving the truck anymore now you become a business owner exactly you're a business owner which happens to sell you know lawn, la- landscaping services you're no longer a landscaper yeah and think about it how many how many landscaper la- landscapers do we know we know a ton of them right but how yeah. many of them are doing it you know they're taking their business to the next level exactly by not selling the service but by changing of how they do the service. Did that get your point correct? Yeah, no, 100%. Even right. if you look at some gardeners, there's some which are called like <coughs> super uh, um, landscapers out there that do all sorts of figures and stuff and they upcharge mm-hmm. so much. All they're doing is cutting a shape into your grass and I mean, two weeks later. Um, you're gonna, gonna need c- the same thing again. You're gonna need the same thing. So basically they're providing a service and I mean, how many gardeners do you h- know that you call, yeah, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go and they don't do, they don't follow up. They don't follow the system. They yep. they start and it's just kind of like, oh, I already have business for today. I'll I mean, I'll pick up the phone tomorrow. Yeah, there was um, and, and it's funny that we used Gardener as an example, uh, because I remember I learned my very first business to business, or as we call it in the real estate, belly to belly, business to business networking, which was I got a I got one of my landscaping guys, um, who said, hey, look, how about this. Uh, if you send me someone, uh, I'll send you business in your real estate. And I was just like, man, this guy blew my mind. The gardener blew my mind. He just said, if I send him people, he will send me people. And that just that just that just blew the the lid off the pot because I was thinking it has to be people on my level. It has to be other you know people in the same level of income as me it has to be people I, i'm thinking i was he just taught me something of value i was just thinking damn okay you know i can maybe yeah. if i send him business and you know he'll send me business as well so sure enough man we we created uh, a long-lasting relationship where those are the, those are the best type of relationships i mean especially in real estate i mean our i mean best referral people is a, pu- a plumber a carpenter a, uh, a guy that fixes appliances and a carpenter. I mean, and those are people that are in houses all day long. Exactly. You know what's one of my favorite, favorite, um, the one one the one person who sends me tons and tons of business? The mailman. You know why? Because he knows when everybody is moving because everybody requests a change of address form from the mailman. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so he's like, Gus, Gus, you got to <laughs> go to that. The next door, they're about to sell out. They're thinking, they're asking for a change of address form. So they're they're in that mindset. Yeah. And he gives me so much lead. And you know what I give him? He doesn't have a, his own business because he works for the Gov. Uh, so what I, what I do, I give him a turkey, man. Every year for Thanksgiving, man, he gets hey, a turkey. There you go. Oh, God. I'm just saying, <laughs> I give him a bird, he gives me some food. I'm, you know, putting Dang. food on the table. There you go. Uh, let's talk about the next hit that we were talking about. Uh, you, you titled this one, Copy Success, Don't Reinvent It. Copy Success, Don't Reinvent It. Ooh, ooh. Talk, <laughs> talk, talk to me, buddy. Okay. So, <laughs> and, you know, I mean, uh, basically, whenever you're in school plagiarizing, and <laughs> copying I never people. never did that. <laughs> yeah, copying <laughs> your neighbor or something like that is always frowned upon. <laughs> and that is the biggest lie when it comes to real life. All right. Um, so copy success, don't real. Okay. Exactly. So this is the only place, real life is the only place where you can copy what someone's doing, be successful at it, and oh, take the credit for it. you're going to have to explain this, and we're going to get <laughs> a lot of plagiarism <laughs> here. <laughs> yeah. So basically, um, for example, if I see um, McDonald's. McDonald's is, uh, doesn't make the best burger. I can make a better bur- better burger. You could probably make a better burger than McDonald's, but they just it'll come with some cost of burning the house down. But okay, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But they they sell more burgers that you and I can. 
So yeah. basically, how do they do it? They have a system that they've made, how to simplify it, how to bring their costs down. They have a bunch of different vendors, and they've created a brand that, I mean, has simplified the process of making a burger, which has brought their costs tremendously down and their profits tremendously high. So okay. basically, by copying and pasting, if you want to open up, uh, I mean, you want to sell T-shirts, all right, find someone that's selling T-shirts and is selling it at a place where you want to be selling them at. I mean, margin price price range wise. Okay. Now, okay, I get it. Now, how do we implement copy success? Don't reinvent it, because I know a lot of people, and depending on what type of industry you're in, this is going to be a little a little bit harder for for some than others. Where you know, I can, I, I I mean, I don't know if I can see attorneys going out there and implementing what other attorneys are doing uh, help me understand that so okay. how would someone copy success um you know in a business sense okay so let's say you brought up uh, an attorney i'm a really good uh reputable attorney and i want to grow my business yeah okay what do i do let me go ahead and get in touch with other uh um, real estate, atter- re- re- uh, real estate. <laughs> attorneys. <laughs> Other attorneys that are really good and really successful. Okay. Uh, let me see. Let me have a conversation with them. Hey, what's your payroll system? How do you get people? What do you go to events? What do you do? Mm-hmm. And okay. you kind of start talking to people that are successful. Yeah. And copying what they're doing. I mean, now is this more like a mentorship? Is that where you're going from? Yeah, I mean, get or a mentor. Try to get in touch with people that are uh, at that level of success where you want to be, okay. and just try to, I mean, be a sponge. Just soak them, soak up anything and everything that they do. Okay. Because if you do what they're doing, you're gonna be producing the same amount that they're producing and having the same volume, efficiency, and what forth. What, okay. What they're doing. Gotcha. Now. Um, obviously, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna seek out the person, it, and and what I'm hearing is it's it's a lot of, um, you know, having a coach that's that's done it and been there and done it, um, you know. So, I, I would say get a coach. Is that is that okay? A coach, yeah, or yeah. find someone who is in your related field and shadow them. Yeah. So what I was, uh, my wife uh, loves Grey, Grey's Anatomy, and what I noticed then. Because uh, she makes me watch it, not that I watch it, but she <laughs> makes me watch it. Um, and sh- and what I noticed that in in the doctor show, um, there's a bunch of like little I, I don't know what they call it, I think the people who follow the doctor around and they just shadow him throughout the hospital mm-hmm. and they see what he does and then they're they're like okay they're either, so yeah they're either doing the residency the residency yeah. right so they're just following the doctor around okay got that so. In, in in business, in real estate, in attorney, in plumbing, and man, do do we have to to be a resident at some time, or do we go from yeah, I, I, I want to be a business owner to I'm going to do everything on my own. They're going to follow me. I'm going to yeah. create the create the path here. Yeah, I mean, you see plumbers. I mean, you got to go through an apprenticeship before you do it on your own. Uh, car salesman. I mean, not every they usually have some type of training program. Hey, this is what you talk to people. This is kind of what you go over. Yeah. Learn what the cars are about. I mean, every single thing they're not. I mean, they're just not throwing out, throwing you out there. They're giving you a system for you to copy, and you're going to be successful. So, whenever you and I are talking, you know, we're just lalagagging, and that's a military term for you guys, <laughs> lalagagging, uh, meaning we're just talking, but not not about much. Uh, but whenever you and I are talking, we're always talking about, you know, some a new Harvard research that came out, uh, a new a new study that came out on how. Uh, clients perceive us as real estate agent or good time to call or you know bad time to call or whatever it is we're we're always talking about some kind of new research from Harvard or or Yale or some kind of good school Um, so how big is is education for you I mean education is is huge uh, I can I can tell you for a fact I was never a straight A student. I'm, now I'm um, not talking about college or high school. I'm talking yeah, about learning. learning yeah, your learning, learning, hundred Learn. percent. Um, I one of my biggest things is I wanted. Uh, I feel like numbers, especially in business, is very big factor. So I told myself, I mean, I want to learn as much about numbers as possible okay. through school and out of school. So I told myself, all right, well, I mean, if you like school, you don't like school, you're going to have to do it to get to where you want to be. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, I studied I studied business uh, business at the University of Miami. Um, Shout out. I got my, got, yeah, I got my bachelor's uh, from there. And, I mean, it it's helped me get to where, where I am. But that doesn't mean now that I have a degree, I stopped stop learning mm-hmm. i'm learning every single day i'm still reading all the the, the harvard reviews all the journals 
I'm reading a bunch of different papers all the time. I'm always I'm going I'm still going to classes. Um, I'm okay. reading books. Uh, I try to keep it one a book a month, basically. Okay. Now, now I understood. You know, the copy success don't reinvent it. Now, a lot of people, um, they they will, they get to that level of now they can be of influence and they can teach other people. And I'm sure even through their success, they had mentors and people who they they looked on and and you know did a little cut copy paste on their business. Um, how, you know, at what level do you say, hey, I sh- I'm not going to stop learning, but now I got to start teaching some of this stuff or I got to start doing, yeah. uh, giving back to, to the people who, who, you know. I mean, I feel like teaching is part of learning. When you teach other people okay. how to do things, you're learning at the same process. You're perfecting your craft. Okay. So, I mean, if I don't know how to do a math problem and I've, n- and I've learned how to do it and now I teach someone else, not only am I teaching them, but I'm also practicing my craft. Okay, gotcha. So that's a huge, uh, huge factor. Uh, so, I mean, I love teaching people all the time because I'm learning while I'm doing it too. All right, good deal, good deal. All right, uh, hit number three. Hit me with that one. That one. <laughs> I'll, I'll hit it. I'll <laughs> perception is not given. Uh, perception is given, not taken. Perception given, yeah. not taken. Um, all right. Okay. Enlighten us. So with that one, um, it's kind of like okay. So if I if I go ahead and call call over a friend, okay, and I tell him, hey, are you interested in you know buying a car? I'm working for X company now, and I'm selling cars. He's gonna be like, okay, I'm not really interested in a car. I don't, I don't. But if you switch it around, and you tell him, hey, look. This car, this brand new came, uh, this car came out. For example, I'll tell you, hey, look, this new BMW M4 came out. It has about 500 horsepower, these fat brakes. Um, it has all of this stuff. It's exclusive. It hasn't even come out uh, yet, and I can get you a test drive in the car. Okay. Automatically, I'm coming from a place of value. Yeah. I'm coming from, I'm giving, I'm making a designer. I'm making it exclusive. I'm giving you, you know, that special treatment. And you're going to be like, oh, wow, he's my, fr- he's my buddy. He's asking me to come over. See this car, mm-hmm. and when he I go, we test drive the car, see the car, and I see if if it's within his budget, he might he might purchase the car. Or he might know someone that might be interested in purchasing a, purchasing a car like that, because you came from uh from a place of value. You came from, you came at him with a different direction. So All it's right. not really about hey look, I was looking to sell a car. It's I mean how I kind of told you, um kind of switched it around and created that ins- excitement. If I'm not excited to hear about it, I don't expect you to be excited to hear about it. Okay, and then what about what do you mean by it's not taken? Perception isn't taken. Okay, because I, I see yeah. a lot of I, I see a lot of uh, realtors out there um, <laughs> and some washed out attorneys and some bad CPA yeah. agents out there. <laughs> they drive the nice car, they spend the big bucks, but are they really? Am I am I in this American facade where it looks like? It, it, is that where you're going with that perception? Yeah. So I mean, it's it's perception. So I mean, you're obviously giving out an image that you're successful, having the nice car, having the watch, having the latest phone, having all that stuff. But okay. it's also not only being superficial. You got to go a little bit deeper into it and okay. see. I mean, are you providing that that value? Are you? It's how it's perceived. So if yeah. I come at you. And I am driving a nice car. I have a nice watch. I have a nice everything. But you ask me a question, and I don't have an answer for you. Then it doesn't I mean it doesn't really matter uh, what car or what I'm driving. But if yeah. I were to come, it the perception I'm giving you is that I'm not I'm not I'm not uh, knowledgeable. But okay. if I answer every single question and I start leading the conversation, now I'm coming from a place of value, and I'm perceiving that I'm knowledgeable of the subject and you should work with me because of that fact. So okay. it's switching the situation. It's it's around. almost in the sense of that that philosophy of respect is earned not taken kind of deal. Yeah, yeah. So okay. basically coming gotcha. coming for yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. gotcha. All right, good deal, good deal. And <laughs> uh, I'm gonna put you on the spot now, brother. <laughs> I'm gonna put you know Mickey Mouse is about to come out. You know that, right? <laughs> Mickey Mouse story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mickey right. Mouse. Uh, I'm gonna bring out Mickey. Mickey's gonna. <laughs> all right, go ahead. Hit me up with so, the Mickey Mouse uh, story. <laughs> <laughs> Told Mickey Mouse story a couple times. So I was I was uh, at a bar. Uh, I was closing out my tab, and I I mean I had I had I had a date with me at the time, 
What what was his name? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. So I mean, we're closing out the tab, and I go to the bar, and I have a Mickey Mouse card. <laughs> Literally, it's Mickey <laughs> Mouse on it. Mickey yeah, Mouse you card. get points <laughs> if you have if you, when you go to Disney. It's you red get, with Mickey Mouse yeah, face on it's it. It's Mickey I, Mouse. All right. So uh, th- <laughs> there's this guy next to me, big kind of jockey guy, kind of built. Goes ahead and sees. <laughs> Uh, sees the, the girl, Mouse. yeah, sees the girl I was with, and says, "Oh, I mean, kind of looks at her. I mean, she was, she was uh, very pretty." And he comes and looks at me. He goes, "Wow, will you really date a guy like that with a Mickey Mouse card? I mean, you really take that guy serious?" <laughs> and at that moment, I stopped and I started to think. I mean, am I gonna tell him, "Okay, I'm the one with the girl. You're not." Am I gonna <laughs> one up him some way? And I just kind of like, I really didn't want any heat. It was kind of late, and I was like, oh, "I'm just gonna chill out." <laughs> kind of ignored him. I just kind of laughed it off. Right. But he came at it again. He was just like, oh, yeah, like, oh, blah, blah. And I was just, hey, what are you doing? So then he comes, I mean, so he takes out, if you know kind of a little bit about the uh, credit cards that uh, Chase has, mm-hmm. it, there's a hierarchy to the cards. And he pulls out a freedom. Basically, freedom is the lowest <laughs> tier card you can have from Chase. And he's like, no, look, like, I have a credit card, whatever. It's freedom, whatever. And I kind of <laughs> I kind of <laughs> laughed because back in my mind, I have that one and every other card that Chase uh, offers. And, and yeah, so I went ahead, turned around, and got my, got, my, uh, got my wallet out. And I have the Sapphire Reserve, which is the highest card that they have, which goes through private banking, which is a whole other um, tier of banking it's even a metal card so when you drop it it has kind of that cling to it mm-hmm. so i go ahead and uh, i take that one out put mickey mouse away take that <laughs> one out and show it to him and he his eyes were just huge he didn't even know what to say uh. and uh and yeah, I mean, <laughs> completely <laughs> shut, shut him out. But I mean, it's but, just you don't want to yeah, look. Look, I love that story, even though uh, you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love that story. Though you know, it's kind of like look, perception. It, you know, it is a lot, uh, but it's really. I mean, I hate to say it, what's in your wallet? <laughs> I mean, you yeah. Know, don't it, judge it, me by my Mickey Mouse. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how to say it. Uh, no, and I love that. You know, it. it a lot of people they they just want to put this front in their business and you know your clients are going to figure it out real quick you might get uh the clients initially maybe to sign that initial document yeah. but once you start putting the work in they'll be like oh this guy ain't for real yeah. like he does not yeah. know 100%. his business it's not really he about does, yeah it's about how you communicating with I, a person how are you following up how do you perceive yourself? Do you and I mean, if I tell you I'm gonna show up at five o'clock, am I gonna really show up at five o'clock? Yeah. If I tell you I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, for example, in real estate, sell your property. Am I really selling your property? Am I really following up my end of the deal? And that goes. I mean, I always, you know, yeah. I under, I understate. Uh, you under understate what you're gonna do, and you overperform of what you, yeah. what you actually do. So expectations are always met. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's it's so real. And again, our clients will find out real quick um, if we have that freedom card or, <laughs> or if we got the, the Mickey Mouse who can deliver. <laughs> yeah. So. so, no, shout out to that. Shout out. Good, good point on that one. Um, all right. So uh, hit number four that you and I were discussing about. And you said uh, creating a designer brand that provides a feeling. Now, I get I get. I, I think I get that. Let me let me get that. Let me see if I understood this right. Is it like the Starbucks experience in comparison to Seven Eleven? Grab a coffee and go. I mean, yeah, hundred percent. When if you read, there's a there's a book. It's called the Starbucks Experience, and it goes <laughs> <laughs> on point. <laughs> it's a pretty cool book. I read it. We in one rehearsed of, yeah. before. So. <laughs> it's uh, on um, on one of my marketing classes. It basically, goes into the fact uh, you're not really purchasing. Uh, the coffee you are per- I mean you're not getting a coffee you're getting the whole experience what's your whole experience you you walk up to to the door you open the door you get that fresh smell of coffee and in it um, so you're sensing it you're walking in you're getting that hey good afternoon good morning mm-hmm. you get to the counter hey what how do you want me to handcraft your coffee wow. it's so it's a whole experience then you get your coffee your coffee has your name on it they're gonna call it out you're gonna go ahead and sit on a really comfortable chair take out your laptop 
kind of start doing your own thing, log on to the free Wi-Fi that they have while you're really comfortable. And yeah. now you're sipping on this really good coffee. Expensive, so it's a good. whole Exactly. So yeah. it's a whole experience that yeah. you get. It's there, not just... There is no way, there is no way we're paying eight bucks for a cup of, a cup of latte and we're just drinking it for the coffee. Yeah. I mean, this, and I promise you this, the the example of the Burger King or the McDonald's that you said, can yeah. you make a better burger than McDonald's? Absolutely you can. Can you make yeah. a better coffee than Starbucks? Absolutely you can. But, I mean, is it the convenience of the electricity, the, the Wi-Fi, the good comfy chairs, the convenience of basically having a mobile office? Exactly. And that's what made it makes it designer. They're getting their own. They're getting their brand, their logo, their stuff, their experience. And I already say, Starbucks, you already think it's comfortable, it's coffee, it's a good, I mean, people meet, and it's kind of the whole ambiance uh, played behind it. And, and how will our, our business entrepreneurs... Uh, take this into their business? How do they create a designer brand uh, that provides a feeling? Okay, so ba basically, again, you have to find uh, where your niche is and ex exploit it and put your brand on it, a name on it, and have that brand, you know, kind of mentioned a couple times. And after a while, it starts becoming... Uh, start becoming a brand. People start associating it mm -hmm. with uh, with the service that you're providing. If you're pro you're providing a good service, awesome. For example, you'll go go ahead and see uh, Spirit Airlines. I went ahead. They're considered to be the taxi of the sky. Everybody knows. You know, you get the cheapest flight, cheapest rate. You almost got to stand up while you're in the plane. <laughs> and <laughs> I mean, you say where? I mean, I I went on Spirit once, and I went on there, <laughs> and I asked her like, I mean, my flight doesn't say where I sit. She, you can sit wherever you want. I mean, it just kind of the you, bathroom an option. <laughs> yeah, you can sit wherever you want. So it's kind of like that. I mean, after time, people just started calling. You know, the taxi of the sky. You just kind of go in there, sit wherever you want, and that's perceived it has. So whenever anything's correlated to being a tax or anything that you think of you go ahead and uh, and think of spirit so if you go ahead and change it up uh when it comes to you see kind of like an lv um just kind of bringing it back we were talking about louis vuitton yeah they're they're i mean the material that they use the canvas that they use is it, it's a canvas first it's not it's not even leather what? Uh, yeah, Louis Vuitton is not leather. No, they some the LV thing that they but have it's, it's is not leather. It's what, what it's, kind of higher quality it's synthetic leather canvas. is it? It's plastic. <laughs> no, not my, not <laughs> Louis, <laughs> not my buddy Louis. So, but are it you does serious have, for real? It's is it is it yeah, plastic? For yeah, yeah, yeah. The zipper is made by a very expensive company, and is it gold there's zipper? a little bit. Yeah, they have a yeah they they they're plated in gold. They used to be. Um, but it's plastic in general. In general, yeah, the bags the bags are plastic. So wow. it's just kind of like, okay, cool. I mean, you're paying all this much for it. It does have leather. The handles are leather. You know, nice little bits and pieces of it are leather. But the actual... Um, Treat the receipt monogram, leather. Yeah, the, mono yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the monogram isn't. And that bag doesn't, I mean, doesn't take more than, I mean, no more than like 50, 60 bucks to make. And they're selling it for... You know, two, three thousand. Apart from its Oof. exclusiveness, wow. so you're already perceiving anything that has that logo. I mean, so, so again, so it, you know, a lot of people are, but it's still, it's still selling. It's still going off yeah. the rack. Yeah. Um, you know, and then taking it back to business. I mean, n uh, I'm just trying to understand. Don't make our business plastic, though. Yeah. No, 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 no. Don't make your Obviously, business plastic. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> yeah. But it's a perceived value that you're given it. If okay. you perceive yourself as being a person that's exclusive, providing a good service and providing everything, and then you're able to follow up with that, and then you attach a name brand to it, over time, you're gonna get you're gonna get that brand recognition. Okay. But it's not. I mean, you don't just start a company today and a year later expect to be you know the biggest and greatest. It takes time after time for you to grow a brand and you know create awareness uh, so so like louis vuitton starbucks apple google they're they're at a hundred their their business at are a hundred right yeah. they're they're doing things top notch mm -hmm. they're they're spending the money where it needs to spend uh they're spending the marketing dollars to create that brand recognition that that perception yeah um the so they're they're spending their their due diligence to make their business top notch yeah. Let me ask you this: uh, On a level of the average business owner and entrepreneur, maybe you know, real estate agents or attorneys, commercial guys, you name it, are they doing it at at a hundred? 
I mean, honestly, there, honestly. Yeah, I mean, good. there's never, there's, you're never at a hundred. There's always room for improvement. You can, you can always make your product better. You can always bring up your sales one way or another. You can always gain uh, market share. Okay. So, I mean, there's always room for improvement. No matter what business you're in or what, uh, what you're doing, you could always tweak it. Because, because uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just harsher. Um, because. <laughs> I don't see, I don't see, you know, people taking their business to the next level where it can easily, easily go. They're yeah. maybe they're not doing the education like they're supposed to, yeah. right? Like literally, w we we started this right before we started this uh, this podcast. The, uh, you were listening to you were you were in a class learning about how to improve your business. Yeah, right yeah, for yeah. for about two hours, an hour and a half, two hours. Yeah, um, you know, and what you do that almost daily. Either you're you're learning a class because I see you there, and you're you're learning. Yeah. Um, you're you're obviously putting money in your business. You're obviously putting quality in your business. Um, you know, so you're taking it to the next level, uh, and there's progression, of course. But man, I'm looking at other business owners, and I'm not seeing that. Yeah, you know, they're taking the lazy route, and we created yeah. an episode for that i think it's episode <laughs> four you're lazy yeah. and you're not gonna make it <laughs> yeah i mean it's finding again it's finding your finding your <coughs> your niche and kind of exploiting it outworking people i mean you can uh, that's why when people ask me how do you do it i'll tell you how to do it it's hard work i mean are you willing to put put in the hard work uh to get the to get the value of it and most of the time people will say yes but at the end of the day they won't mm -hmm. are you willing to wake up you know, an hour earlier to get a mo one more hour out of your day. Yeah. Are you willing, you know, to do all the work? And one, mm -hmm. Once I give people all the tasks that they need to do to start producing at a higher volume, to start yeah. making the money, they're like, okay, yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah. A week out, they're not. Yeah. So, I mean, the path is out there. I mean, it's just, are you willing to actually stand up and go get it? Gotcha. Man. Um, all right. Hit number five. Hit number five is uh, take the path that is less traveled take the path that is less travel mm -hmm. now <laughs> you know <laughs> whoo, i'm thinking I'm, I'm thinking biblically here you know yeah. narrow is the gate that leads to salvation i'm thinking that way <laughs> <laughs> why does the gate that leads to destruction now i'm thinking yeah. you know um t talk to me about that one man take okay. the path that is <laughs> less traveled. <laughs> yeah what i mean by that i mean uh, if everybody is doing something a certain way and you <coughs> have a niche in the market or different way, then go ahead and do it. Give you a perfect example. Um, I used to I used to work at a bank uh, up in the Midwest of uh, the United States, and one of the first things um, that happened got in there with a bunch of Ivy League students. I was the only non Ivy League up there. Um, for me, it was I mean I was intimidated. I looked at all these people producing at a super high level and everything. And they basically told me, here's a list of people you can contact. I will create business for you. Talk to them. You can get them great. If not, I mean, that's fine. And every time I talk to them, they'll be like, oh, I already spoke to someone from your firm. I already spoke to someone mm -hmm. there. I don't see the value. And it just, I was going dead end. I mean, I was doing the task. I was doing everything. But I wasn't able to pick up a single client in two weeks. So I told myself after two weeks, I got to either restructure or I'm going to be out the door mm -hmm. real soon. So um, everybody told me, I mean, you got to act a certain way. You got to act more American. You got to talk a little bit with without your Miami accent. You got to, <laughs> I mean, go through the things that, no, we usually go through. And I was like, I came to a point where I was like, no, you know what? I'm Hispanic. And I'm going to, I checked really? off the box. Yeah, I checked <laughs> off the box. I was Hispanic. Uh, I know how to speak. Tax deduction. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to speak fluent Spanish. And apart from that, I know how to write, uh, uh, write and read fluent Spanish. So you know what? I went ahead and did that. I looked up. You know, people that spoke Spanish in the area that were that met the criteria for for them to be one of our clients. Um, I went to that list and I hit that hit list fairly hard. I went to it at the same with the same um, exact thing like I was doing the English list. Mm -hmm. But what ended up happening? No one was calling these people. These people had no clue what was going on, what mm -hmm. they could possibly be be doing. And I I picked up more clients than anyone in that firm that year. Even wow. top producing people, like more than anyone. I had more clients than anyone else, but all my clients were Spanish speakers. I found a niche in the market. I took the le the, the road less traveled by, and I exploited it to a point where, like, my, my boss and other people that were around me, how did you do it? 
I mean, yeah. I did what you told me not, <laughs> told me not to do. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't be Hispanic. I'm like, I am Hispanic. So I switched the conversation, and I was able to have, uh, able to have that very high in- intellectual conversation and explaining what we were doing with their, with their, with their money and what was kind of going on, in <coughs> in Spanish, and and yeah, I mean, I gained their trust, and I mean, basically, I was o- able able to outperform people by taking the road least traveled by. Yeah. So using my my disadvantages to my well, what were con- preconceived as my disadvantages to my advantage. Oh wow, man, that was. That was on point, man. <laughs> that was on point. Um, no, man. A lot of uh, the the thing the thing that I that I see here, um, you know, from from all the points here, is if you're a business owner, if you're listening to this and you're like, man, how can I do this? Um, I'm gonna challenge you on one thing that kind of like my overall vision of this this whole this whole podcast. Um, let someone come in and overanalyze your business and see where that goes. Because there's going to be some path that haven't been traveled. There's going to be some areas where it doesn't feel designer. It feels plasticky. Uh, <laughs> there's going to be some perception that it's just that Mickey Mouse freedom feeling, but really you need to bust out that metal card, yeah. right? Yeah. There's going to be some areas where where you need to look at some, some people and just copy their their success yeah right and then there's going to be areas of you know the, the way where you see other people selling it and you just got to hit it hard yeah. you know so um i would challenge you this if you are whatever business owner you are i am a hundred percent sure that there's another business owner doing the exact same thing you're doing right that has done it at an an amazing level so i i challenge you to go out there and let them check your business out you know uh it starbucks uh, apple google uh all keller williams our our firm uh pay big money big bucks to have other people third-party people come out there and let them scrutinize your business just to see areas that they can improve on and areas that they need to hit that all control delete button uh so that way they can they can you know start start good so one of the things also have your pride (laughs) completely out of the equation because i know a lot of people when someone comes in and tells them hey this is what's wrong with your business or whatever they'll get completely hostile no 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 this is the right way this is you're not producing where I'm producing and I'm telling you what I see just kind of yeah. you know take it for yeah. for what it is don't it's it's a very humbling moment man it's a very humbling yeah. moment and that's why we're telling you to to let someone analyze your business that has taken it to the other level that you're trying to reach and uh, have an open mind and have be like look you can say whatever has some guidelines look uh, don't hurt my emotions don't hurt my feelings you can say it respectful uh, but scrutinize my business mm-hmm. you know and if you have people who love you and who who care about your success they'll do that man they'll be like okay b- bust out the PNL yeah yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like oh, yeah, no, I don't have that. You know, yeah. bust out your marketing dollars. How much have you contributed to Facebook advertisements? Nothing. Why? Oh man, there you go. That's some areas where where you need to exactly. improve on. So, uh, put yourself in a place where you you're okay with getting those receiving those um, those those comments and those solutions yeah. to no, 100%. take your business. And at the end of the day, finding those things help you make it designer making making it a way that. If someone else were to do what you're doing, mm-hmm. they're like, "Hey, that's that's such and such mes- method of doing something." Yeah. And now you've made a brand, you've made a name, you've made you made it there. Yeah, exactly. All right. Um, again, uh, amazing, amazing uh, podcast, amazing show uh, with our special guest, <laughs> <laughs> Joe, <laughs> my man, Joe thank Valencia, you, bro. You. Uh, he, he's got so much wisdom in here. I'm just trying to peel it away and just steal <laughs> it from him. So I can just put it in <laughs> hey, me. We're trying, we're trying <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have, me and him, we have such a great commodity. Uh, you know, good friendship. I love his friendship. He's a good guy. Um, again, if you guys need any real estate, uh, reach out to him. He's a, he's a phenomenal realtor. Good realtor as well. Uh, we're both here for you. Um, you know, whatever you guys need. Uh, but most, most, most importantly, 
like, share, subscribe, and comment. We want to hear from you. Uh, hit the little bell button so that you, that way you guys can get notified of when we have our next hit. Good deal? All right. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Good job, guys. See you guys next one.